Guys, this is Mambo. This little puppy. Mambi. Hi, buddy. We're gonna put you down, buddy. How's it going, guys? Today, I wanted to talk about something that I've mentioned briefly, but I haven't really discussed in depth. And so today, I kind of wanted to talk about uh, a decision that I made at the end of February of this year, which was to leave my job. So I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of discuss what I went through when I was deciding to leave my job, why I thought about leaving in the first place, what were the things that ultimately made me leave and accept a new opportunity, and kind of where I'm going a little bit now. And just before we kind of get into the middle of this video, I want to just first mention that I think I'm really fortunate to be in the position where I can leave a job in this point in time. I think that stuff that's going on right now in the world is a little insane. Um, a lot of people don't have job security, so I definitely feel thankful that I was actually able to leave a great job that I had and now go to another great opportunity um, with all the stuff that's kind of happening in the world right now. So I think this was one of the bigger factors that led to me leaving my job, and I think it's an important one for everyone really to consider. So I think this is something that you guys should think about constantly. Um, and that's that work is a really big part of your life, right? Most jobs you are probably gonna be at work actually more than 40 hours a week, but regardless, even 40 hours a week is a really big amount of time, right? Relative to your life and what you do every day, right? It's five days a week, it's 40 hours a week. Um, and so it's important to like your job, right? It's important to like your coworkers, it's important to like the culture of companies that you're working at. And I think maybe the most important, I, I think, you know, People rank these three things differently, but I think something that's really important specifically is the product that you work on, right? What do you work on day to day? Why do you come into work? What makes you stay there? What makes you want to stay longer? What makes you want to finish your projects? Um, and for me, I think one of the most important things definitively, although there's a ton of different things you can consider when you think about whether or not you like an opportunity, I think working on a product that you like is extremely, extremely important. And so for me, I think that I really loved my company. I loved the culture of the company. I loved the people at the company, but I didn't feel like I was able to fully check that third box. So I think I was able to check the fact that I liked the people. I really loved the people, my teammates, everyone in the company was awesome. I really loved the culture of the company. So that was the second check. And I feel like the third check box of trying to check off the fact that I loved the product and loved what we were building and really personally aligned with its interests was not really totally there for me. So I think that the product that my company offered was interesting, but I don't think it personally aligned with me. I don't think that working on that kind of product for me was the product that would make me want to you know, dig in and stay longer at work, um, to work extra hard to fix some bug that was happening. And I think that's a really important part of your work, right? I think people always say that if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I don't feel like I could wholeheartedly say that that was me. I don't think I woke up every day loving going to work for working on the product itself. And that's okay. I think that if you are in a position where you love the product you work on and you could check all those boxes and more, that's awesome, you know, good for you. And I, but I don't think that's really the reality of uh, the majority of people. So, I'm striving to be able to check that third box and I really want to be able to check all those boxes ideally and I want you guys to too, but I don't think it's always realistic. And so I think it's okay also to acknowledge the fact that you might not always be able to check off those boxes and more, right? It's always a trade-off. There's always trade-offs in life. Sometimes maybe you'll like the culture of the company and you'll like the product, but maybe you have problems with your manager. Sometimes maybe you don't like the culture for some reason or you don't like aspects of the culture, but you love the product and love your team, right? So there's a whole variety of different combinations of those different things that make you love or not love a job. Uh, and so it's okay to not have all of them, but you always want to try and maximize. And if you can't have all of them, that's great. So for me, I think that was really uh, the first driver for me to try and find a new opportunity. And that was just that I didn't feel as passionate about the product that I worked on as I thought some other opportunity could provide. So I think the second factor for me that led to me to leave my job was my learning. And what I mean by this is that I think the rate at which I was learning things declined significantly. And so what I mean by that is that when I first joined the company, I felt like a sponge. I felt like I was soaking up everything about our tech stack. I was learning a new language. I was learning tons of different things like a new ORM, uh, different technologies. I was working with AWS, cloud computing, 
lambda functions, like all this stuff, right? And so I felt like I had a lot to figure out. I had a lot to learn and I did, I did learn a lot. And for that, I'm extremely thankful. And I think it really put a lot of valuable tools in my toolkit, so to speak, to then take to another opportunity and just carry with me throughout the future. But with that being said, I feel like as I stayed at the company longer and longer, I felt like the rate at which I was learning things decreased, meaning that once I had a certain base knowledge or base understanding of those different technologies and frameworks, et cetera, I don't think that I continued learning or advancing at the same rate. And for me, that was problematic because I think that, especially as engineers, I think you should always be striving to learn things. I think you should try and always make sure you're learning new things on your own and in your job to make sure that you don't get phased out of the market. And what I mean by that is that technology, programming, engineering, software engineering, right? This field is advancing so fast and so quickly, it's always changing. So I think you really have to do a good job of staying up to date with different languages, technologies, frameworks, et cetera, uh, to make sure that if you do move opportunities or you do want to move opportunities, you're not kind of like in the past, you know, you're, you know what's relevant, you know what's good and why. And so I think you really need to make sure that you're always learning, especially as an engineer. I think the third thing that I that made me consider leaving my job and this kind of piggybacks off the last point was I didn't feel like I had a ton of senior mentorship. And again, this is super important. I think in general, I think this is something regardless of what field you're in, I think you should try and have a mentor. Um, and I didn't really feel like I had a handful of different people that I could turn to, to actually have my questions answered, to receive constructive criticism from and I think that that also kind of pushed me to look for new opportunities because I always want to make sure that I am learning and that I'm correcting the things that I could, you know, I'm doing wrong or I could be doing better. And ultimately, I really want people around me who could say, you know, Kevin, when I was at your experience level, I wish I had done X, Y, and Z. And I didn't feel like I had a handful of those people around me who could tell me that. With that being said, I think that, the, you know, there were definitely a handful of extremely talented engineers in my previous company, but... I think that mentorship wasn't really a focus, right? You know, it was a startup and so we didn't have organized mentorship. A lot of this stuff that we did day to day was just making sure that we shipped features and code for the product to make sure it's as, you know, as good as it could be for our customers, et cetera. Um, and so there wasn't a heavy emphasis on mentorship and that was definitely something that I wanted to have in my next opportunity. I think the next thing that really um, kind of pushed me to leave that job and to jump into a new one was the fact that I had only been at smaller companies. And so if you guys aren't familiar, if you guys haven't been following my channel for a little while, uh, I'm about almost three years out of college now. And so that was my second job. Although to be honest, I really consider it my first job out of college. And so the two companies I had worked for, including this opportunity, uh, had both been startups. And so they were extremely small. The first company that I worked at was, I think, 40 people maybe total with maybe five engineers. And this new opportunity that I had, right, and that I just left was about 100 people total with about maybe 15 or so engineers. And so I really wanted to know what the other side of the coin looked like, right? I had had the experience of working at smaller companies, working in more intimate teams, and now I wanted to know what it'd be like to work at a way larger company ideally um, with a lot more engineers. And so that's something that I was looking for, again, for that learning opportunity, right, to make sure that I can learn the best things that I can, as well as having that mentorship and those people around me who can answer the questions that I really wanted to have answered. And this last point, I think, and it's probably the biggest one for me, and I think it should be a big one for you guys as well, is that I didn't want to become complacent. And I think that this is something that kind of creeps up on you and you have to remind yourself of it because if you're not careful, it's very easy to become complacent, right? Like for me, if we look at what I was doing, I had incredible hours, I had a really good team, I had basically minimal work. Like I, did, I didn't have to, I never felt stressed about work. I could always leave whenever I wanted to. My team and my company was very trusting of what I did and when and how I did it and the hours at which I did it, which I was extremely thankful for. But the longer that I stayed, the, the easier I could see it becoming uh, a longer and longer thing. And what I mean by that is the longer and longer that I stayed, the more comfortable that I became with the work that I was doing, the code base that I was working on, the languages I was working in, the people I was working with, and the work that I was ultimately doing, right? And so that doesn't fare well for me 
wanting to go and do more, me wanting to work harder, me wanting to go the extra mile, right? And basically get all the things that I want in an opportunity. And so I think it's important for you guys to make sure that you guys have, you know, you guys know your five-year plan, so to speak, or you guys know what you want to get to if you're not there already, right? You guys have to have your eye on that goal. And so for me, I knew that this wasn't really checking all the boxes that I wanted. And I knew that even though it was a great job and I was paid well and I loved the people, et cetera, et cetera, that I had another goal in mind and I didn't want to lose sight of that goal. And so it was funny because even when I was leaving, I couldn't help but feel that maybe I was making a wrong decision, right? Why would I leave this awesome company with these great people, this good culture, these amazing hours, this like very, very manageable work, et cetera, to kind of just jump into a sea of unknown, right? And so I think that ultimately what made me go over that edge and decide to take the new opportunity was really, at the end of the day, I think it really was one, me being afraid of being complacent. And so regardless of whatever the other opportunity offered, I was really thinking, I don't want to be complacent. I think the longer I stay here, the easier it'll be to stay here even longer. And so I really wanted myself to take that jump. And then on top of that, I think that I didn't feel as strongly aligned with the product as I wanted to be, and I thought that the new opportunity would help me check that third checkbox that I really wanted. And I was kind of gambling on the previous two, right, of like something like the people and the culture that I'd be working in. So ultimately, I obviously decided to take the new opportunity, and I started about three weeks ago um, remotely, which has been super cool so far. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about the opportunity right now, but those were kind of my reasons for actually you know, like being at this company and then deciding to jump and swing to this other branch, so to speak. Um, and that's a little bit as to what I was thinking about and why when I ultimately decided to make that decision. And I hope that it gives you guys insight as to what I think you should probably think about when you're considering a new opportunity, starting your own startup, leaving a job to work on a side project, whatever it may be. Um, I think it's important to think about those different points that I mentioned, because this is something, again, that everyone goes through in their career people go through constantly, right? Especially engineers. I think tenure companies typically tends to be about a year before engineers tend to leave and go somewhere else. So it's not uncommon, right? And I think this is something that you need to think about. And they're important life decisions, right? How you make your livelihood, how much you make, how happy your job makes you, along with a ton of other factors are super, super important in determining things that you're gonna be able to do in life, uh, as well as how happy you're gonna be, which I think is very, very important. So guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope that this video was helpful and I hope it kind of gave you a little bit of insight as to what I considered when leaving my job and why I ultimately decided to leave. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor and leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. I'll see you guys next time.